Welcome everyone to our midweek Lenten service wherein we will focus on the Via Della Rosa. At this time, um, I would like to invite you to turn to page two in the bulletin, which is found on our website. As always, I just want to begin by making this clear. As always, even though we are not physically together, it is our hope and prayer that this worship time is to your eternal welfare and benefit. We will now start on page two in the bulletin, which again is available on the website with the invocation and opening versicles. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful. And you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. We continue now with the psalm of the day, which we will speak responsibly. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for the with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. The reading for this day, for this midweek Lenten service, comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 26 through 31. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. They, then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this strange and tumultuous time that we find ourselves in. The Via Della Rosa, also known as the Way of Suffering. And this is the path that Jesus walked in the city of Jerusalem to his crucifixion. And it's a very important path for many Christians, in fact, Tons and tons of Christians go to Jerusalem to make this very pilgrimage, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus every year. It's a fascinating place. It's a fascinating pilgrimage. Oddly enough, though, for us who are here in Bronxville, New York, and beyond in the Westchester area, 
we cannot physically be in that place right now for a myriad out of reasons. But the important thing to keep in mind is though we cannot be physically at the Via Della Rosa, that doesn't mean we can't learn something from it. That doesn't mean that we can't contemplate the Via Della Rosa or also known as the way of suffering. Because there's much for us to glean and much for us to ponder during this time, much for us to learn and to take to heart. You see, if we look at the reading from Luke, Luke chapter 23, one of the first people that we encounter on the Via Della Rosa is a man by the name of Siren Cyrene, who Luke says is a passerby. And as we all know well, Simon of Cyrene is passing by and an interruption occurs, an interruption in his life occurs. Jesus could not carry his cross because he was so weak by this time. He had been bludgeoned and whipped, and at this moment he was too weak to carry his cross. And so Roman soldiers see Simon of Cyrene and they say, hey you, pick up his cross. And so Simon of Cyrene is interrupted. His regular life, his regular routine is interrupted, and now he has to carry the cross for Jesus. And I can't but help but wonder, what did Simon of Cyrene have planned that day that was interrupted? I'm sure he had plans. I'm sure he had goals for the days. I'm sure he had a vision for the day. And all of that was thrown out the window when those Roman soldiers told him to pick up Jesus' cross and to follow him all the way up to Golgotha. <laughs> what a challenging, challenging interruption that must have been for Simon. And I think there's something that we can really relate to here, something that we can really resonate with, and it's that idea of interruption, especially right now. And though we're not like Simon of Cyrene, where we're specifically being asked to carry Jesus' cross, I think we can relate to him, as I just noted, in light of the interruption that occurred in his life, in light of the inconvenience that occurred. Never did it pop into his mind that he would have to carry someone's cross that day. And in a similar way, here are we, right now, dealing with the interruption of the coronavirus. We, too, have our routines. We have our plans. We have our conveniences. And all of this has been interrupted by the coronavirus. All of this has been thrown out the window. And here we are in a sort of what we would call a new normal, or at least maybe it doesn't feel normal yet. And there's a lot, a lot of anxiety because we don't know what's coming. We don't know what's next. I know if you're like me, you want everything to go back to normal now, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen anytime soon. The unpredictable seems to be the new normal. And in many regards, it's scary, it's unfortunate, it's daunting, and it's anxiety-ridden. So the question is, well, what now? What can we do? Well, I think there's a lot for us to glean from the Via Della Rosa, or at least the gospel reading for this day. And it's that in the midst of all that is going on right now, I want to encourage you to take this as an opportunity to draw closer to your God, to draw closer to your God in the midst of this interruption, to draw closer to your God as things slow down, as our routines slow down, as our regular way of doing life slows down. Because the reality is, is that there's an opportunity here, an opportunity in the midst of this unfortunate interruption that is the coronavirus. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think about what I'm about to share with you, to ponder it. Think about Simon of Cyrene, who is interrupted. And in many regards, we could say his life is completely changed as a result of being asked to carry Jesus' cross. Simon of Cyrene is interrupted, asked to carry Jesus' cross, asked to carry this Roman instrument of execution. This instrument that for all intents and purposes is a very negative thing. And yet little did Simon know that by carrying the cross for Jesus, he was enabling Jesus, enabling Jesus to bring salvation to the world, to bring salvation to him. 
to bring salvation to you, to bring salvation to me. Little did Simon know that God was using this horribly, horribly bad thing, this awful instrument used for execution, the cross, to bring about good, to bring about salvation for each and every one of us. Think about that. Remember what Paul says in Romans? That God works all things for good for those who love Christ Jesus. Ponder that. Contemplate that. Because again, to go back to the meaning of the Via Della Rosa, what does the Via Della Rosa mean? It means the way of suffering. And we all know where this way leads. It leads to Jesus' death. All of this is seemingly bad, but ponder for a moment all the good that came about as a result of Jesus' suffering and as a result of Jesus' death. Through Jesus' death came redemption, came our redemption. And also through Jesus' suffering and death came resurrection. Through this dark place came the light of God's resurrection for us. Think about that. Through such horror came life, came resurrection, came abundant grace, came forgiveness, came new creation for each and every one of us. So I ask that you would ponder this during this time during this challenging time. Use this as an opportunity to draw closer to your God and also use this as an opportunity to remember that good will come of all of that we're going through right now. That our God works good, works good out of seemingly horrible situations for those who love him in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with the litany as found on page four. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a blessed rest of the day. See you next time.